That's an odd looking pancake. It's like a. Looks, it looks familiar, like a mutant Mickey Mouse. Maybe a rocket ship. Excuse me. Sorry. Could I, could I get some whipped cream for my rocket ship? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Martin, so what is that? Um, you tell me. Uh, choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good rocket ship. Never seen that. What's up, everybody? So here we have Tom DeLong. He's exhausted. I'm exhausted. We both don't want to be here, but we're going to show you how to do deadlifts. Tom is a biomechanics expert. Uh, you can go ahead, please tell everybody about yourself. So what we. Do you, what do you want to know exactly? So uh, what's your background? Like everybody um, looks up to you as a great powerlifting coach. I personally have learned from this guy. Uh, for uh, uh, squats, and uh, I've applied his techniques to my squats in World's Strongest Man, which have uh, placed me some good points. And also my deadlift form, a lot of it is thanks to Tom as well. I've been in the lifting industry for like 40 years. I started with Larry Pacifico, who's nine-time world powerlifting champion. I started with him in like 1979. I got my undergraduate at Ball State in exercise science, and a degree, uh, a master's degree at Cal State Long Beach, uh, where I specialize in biomechanics, uh, resistance training, and program design. I'm at UCLA for 12 years. I, con I currently teach at Concordia University in Irvine. Uh, I travel all over the world. Specifically, I work with uh, the Sports Authority of Thailand, teaching them, their coaches, about program design and biomechanics as well, too. All right, with all that information we just spewed out, He's got to get to warming up now. So, and you haven't warmed up yet. So get to it. So, you yes. got to do your rotators. I can't, I have too much arthritis and I can't move my arms. So I, I have very little movement patterns. There. Oh. So I can't, that's why I can't push overhead. I can only push forward. It's because you don't do your rotators time. No, yeah, I have the arthritis. So you can think- You have arthritis because you don't do rotator stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey Martins, what are you doing? Uh, I'm taking care of something important. I'm warming up my rotators. I'm warming up my rotators too. But in private. Because everybody makes fun of me for them. Okay, all silliness aside, what do you have to do with the deadlift? If you look at the deadlift, it's a lifting an object from a dead stop from the floor. Just like all the times, like if you work in industrial settings or an office and all that, how do you pick things up off the floor? You're not supposed to use all back. The key here is how do you set up to use the legs? The way you're built, uh, the length of your segments and all that will have a big uh, outcome on how you deadlift. You approach the bar. I like to use Mark Ripito's approach. What he does, he'll have his lifters walk up to the bar about an inch, inch and a half away from the bar. So what he does, You'll stand here. Now, a lot of people have their feet straight. Other people have their feet turned out because if you look at a lot of Olympic lifters, when they come down and grab the bar, they push their legs out to the side, which keeps their trunk upright more. So you can use either one, doesn't matter. Walk up to the bar, inch, inch and a half. With the legs straight, you reach down, grab the bar, and then push your knees forward until your shins touch the, touch the bar. Pull the bar tight, hips at the right height, and you need to sit back. You don't want to be too far forward on the balls of your feet. You want to be on the whole foot. That's the big key here. You want to keep also too, the bar should be right over the top of your shoelaces or what they call where the area from the foot and the leg meet together. It's called the dorsum. The bar should always be there. So when you sit, pull the bar tight, chest up at the right angle. You don't want to round your back. You want to keep a normal or dotted curve, sit back, keep your shoulders slightly in front of or right over top of the bar. And when you do that, you'll push through the ground. Think about pushing the floor away from you. But the key is, once you come off the ground, you keep the bar as close to your legs as possible. Because the farther away it goes from you, the more stress is gonna be on the low back. The closer it is and you sit back, 
if you keep the bar really close, you can utilize the legs more. Mm -hmm. So he's walking up a couple inches. Now, it also depends how tall you are too. So we'll adjust there about an inch, inch and a half away. He'll reach down with his legs straight, grab the bar. Now he'll put, he'll bend his knees and push his shins forward. So you see right here, that's where his hip height is. So now he doesn't want to sit down. He just wants to shift his weight backwards on his whole foot. So when he drags the bar up, he'll drag it up his shins. Like let's do it a little slower. So when he's there, he'll sit back, drag the bar up his shins real, okay, once he gets past his knees, he'll push his hips through, not too far, because in a competition, the, the shoulder had to stay over the bar. Let's do it again. Oh. Drag it up, push the hips through just a little, now straighten the legs up. Once the hip, hips go forward and the trunk goes up right, when you get to the position where the shoulder is right over the bar is when you extend. Because if you look at a competition, and me being a judge, I have to look for that. When, when you want to come up here in a competition, you keep the shoulders over the bar. It's okay for your knees to re-bend as long as the bar doesn't go back down. So once you get to this point, you just straighten up. So you can see all the load there is on the legs, and that's what you want. This is great, because uh, lately, I've actually been having a lot of struggle figuring out what a good setup is for me. Ever since I started my knee pain, the roll doesn't work quite the same for me. We'll see uh, how these little cues Help me, because I completely forgot about that whole rocking back thing. That felt really good just now. You don't want to round it at all. But was it? A little bit. Now right there, hips up a little bit. Now sit back. Now drag it up. Push the hips through right there. That's what he wants. And you can see the entire time, his shoulders are right over top of the bar, and you want to maintain that through the entire lift. Awesome. No straighten out the legs too soon. No bar out in front. Well, the thing is, if I lift by myself without assistance, I'll lose sight of these uh, minute adjustments that make a huge difference. So having Tom here kind of reminds me of uh, these, bas basically the foundations, the, the, the basics of the deadlift that I uh, have lost sight of. Those little, those little key features of what we call, people say cues and all that, they're actually called critical features, like mm. pull your chest up, sit back, all that puts you in the proper position. Yep. So if you're in the optimal position, if you optimize your, your optimize your mechanics, you can maximize your performance and minimize the risk of injury. A lot of the instructions that I give, you know, a lot of people think, wow, that's a lot to remember. So what we're gonna do now is go back and look at it piece by piece. We're gonna watch out if like, we're gonna watch for if like the hips rise quicker than the shoulders, if the bar path veers forward, or backwards and basically where uh, how everything is aligned. All right, let's go ahead. Go. He's gonna he's gonna walk up to the bar. He's gonna get in the right position. Hips up a little bit more. Right there now. Drag it up. And what he wants to do, the hips and shoulders should rise at the same time, and we'll adjust a little bit from there. Arch your back. There you go. Right there. There you go. Come down. That bar should be on his legs at the whole time. Raise it up. There you go. So uh, this is all fantastic uh, information. And a lot of it's taking me by surprise because I didn't even realize that ever since I tore my lat one year ago, uh, I've kind of let go of some of these critical features, yes. such as my upper back is starting to be a little looser and my shoulders around a little bit more because I've been avoiding using my lat. Now I have to reteach myself how to pull my shoulders back, pull, push this bar back into my legs to activate my lats again and basically rock my body back as I do that simultaneously. So thanks to this guy. I had a little light bulb go off. We'll see how that works with heavy weights today. Another thing we have to look at too, and we talked about the starting position of the trunk angle. Now, if we, if we look at that, what we're trying to do, if somebody's got really long arms, long legs, and a short trunk, the people with the, the longer the arms, the better the starting position of the trunk. It's gonna be more vertical, which means the legs are gonna be like in a partial squat position. 
Now, for me, I had to bend over like here because my arms was so short just to get to the bar. It was like an RDL. Yeah. So, yeah, it was. If you look at the people that have really long arms, they're going to start about six inches higher, so they're going to be able to use more legs, not so much low back. So that's what we're looking at. That's through the analysis process. So go ahead, let's do that again. There you go. Do it again. Okay, now you're straight. Your straight legs are straight out. That's a little too much. Keep the butt down just a little bit more. Right here. Right there. Now you sit back. Here's the leg. That was bad. Now you can see his legs weren't straightened out first. The first couple mm. reps, his legs straightened out a little bit, so his trunk angle went this way. The last one, you sat back and you were in the right starting position, so when you came up, the back came up that way. You weren't straightening out your legs. You were using uh, the legs more. These are those critical features that I'm talking about. This is an applied science laboratory. Don't you use scientific principles in here to use your lips? Are you? <laughs> What we were just discussing is, yeah, we really focus on these mechanics being in the right position. All the forces are in the right places, so he can make that lift, use the whole body to do this lift. Now, the heavier he goes, he's gonna have to really focus on being in the right position. And as he gets heavier, he's gonna have to make sure that everything's in the right place, just at a, like a lighter weight. So what we do, we practice the lighter weights with a good technique, and we slowly add weight to make sure that those parts of the body are all stressed. Because you might have a real weak link in there, and that's what's gonna show up when you- You gotta when, find out which yeah, way. You gotta find, yeah, you gotta find out at what, at what point, at, at the heavier weights, you know, what was your rep, what was your maximum, but at what percentage of that rep maximum your form starts to decay. Mm. And then we have to look at that. So this aspect. is something uh, that has been an issue lately because I have been making too big of uh, jumps in my sets just to get to ha uh, heavier weight quicker and to be done with the workout quicker. Because that's one thing that just happens with uh, the stronger you get, the, more, the longer it takes to warm up those heavy weights. So I've been rushing that process because I wanted to fit more into my workout in terms of other events. So I've uh, made bigger jumps with my deadlifts to get up to weight and it's thrown my technique out of balance. So. And him saying this is exactly, uh, from a coach's perspective and a, uh, a scientist's perspective, this is how people get hurt. Too much, too soon, too fast. All right, set it up, set it up right. Good grip, good hip position. Okay, that one, you, your hips came up too fast. They were, they were down too far. Okay. So what you did when you came up, you basically did a, uh, a modified stiff-legged dead. Good to know, okay, here we go. So once again, when he gets heavier, he's got to really focus on that. Okay, hips down, right there. Now, that was much better. The hips and shoulders stayed at the same time, and the back angle stayed. Uh, Felt so much better. And it was, because the back angle was was the same all the way through as you lifted off the floor. Awesome. That's the, other really one, the other one, his hips came <clears> up a little bit, and he did more of a modified <clears throat> stiff-legged dip. It has to be, the back can go has to be maintained through the entire lift until you get past the hips. You gotta imagine like- Or past the knees. Try to push up a building with your entire, entire yeah. back. All right, think about this. There's no textbook perfect technique, but what are the, what are the steps to follow? You know, about trunk angle and the feet in the right position, the bar close to the body and all that. That's textbook technique, not rounding the back. Those little steps. Because everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna do it differently because they're built differently. Or what is their weak links? But let's find those basic steps that they have to follow. If they follow that, they may have a different technique than you or different body type, but that would be a textbook perfect uh, uh, technique for them. More important than that, this might be a, a double overhand grip PR. I'm not doing hook grip for those of you haters. Pull the bar in too. Right there. Beautiful. Yes! Right, let's go, remember. Bar close, whole foot, sit back, trunk angle. Shit. All right, huh. so you can see there, your hips were down too low when you started. Too low, And huh? as soon as you started to pull, their hips rose. Let's go, come on. Let's go, baby. All you.
Keep it close. Keep the back tight. Push through the floor. Bar close. There you go, all the way. Down. All right, good. Nice. Straighten out the legs. Do it again. Straighten out the legs. One more. Straighten out the legs. Straighten out the knees. Good. Yeah. Now, a lot of times, you can see this last couple of reps, he was, you know, his hips were coming up a little too fast. And a lot of times when you bounce like that, you know, you bounce off the floor, it's a lot, you know, you try to get that bounce and a little momentum off there. But what happens is when it does that, you get out of position and you can't stay tight. So if you just touch and go to do that or do a complete pause, reset and go again, that's a different story. You can use touch and goes for strength endurance. All right, so for today, I'm gonna to cut it off at that. Ended up with uh, 725 pounds for four reps. Uh, my goal was overly ambitious, as it has been actually for the last uh, four weeks to really try to push up my weights. I gotta relearn how to be patient. That is a principle I followed for many years, and I gotta hold on to that even as a professional, and then I lose sight of those basics and critical features as we we're talking about. Uh, just a week and a half ago, I pulled 910 pounds, and then right after that, I got 950 pounds to my knees. Almost locked it out in competition, but failed. And I think my body's uh, suffering from that one still. So I gotta come back slowly and build up to those heavyweights for the big show in five weeks. And, you, and I'll be working with Tom. You gotta let your body recuperate and everything. You know, but once again, you're gonna get different opinions from different people, pushing and all that kind of stuff. But just follow what your body is responding to. If your body says no, don't do it. That's up to you. But once again, we're gonna to try to keep him on track, you know, and the best thing you can do too is keep like a log about I how you feel. Do. Okay, keep a always log, do. how you I write feel, everything down. how much sleep you get, keep a track of all that. Cause that does, if you look at that, look at all those little things that affect your performance. And just if one, one of those is off, could change your performance it could, completely. It could. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, like and subscribe. Tom's gonna to be helping me out for the next several weeks. We'll see what kind of deadlift numbers I could put up in the big show. Arnold's Classic, Columbus, Ohio, coming right up. In four weeks, actually. Okay. Plus a deload week.